Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys, welcome to today's episode. I was uh, kind of gearing up and getting some stuff done around the house and I got a uh, message, an alert on my phone saying that I want a storage unit. I completely forgot that I put a bid on it, kind of walked away. It takes sometimes a couple weeks for these units to end. Anyway, uh, looks like I want a storage unit again. Um, so I'm gonna go and test it out uh, today and I'm gonna go back tomorrow and start the clean out. But I figured today might be a great day to go and just have a quick little peek in. So let's uh, head on over to the unit. Um, let's see what might be in this thing and hopefully we'll find a few treasures. Let's go. I'm here at the storage facility and I'm at my locker. We got the uh, old lock off. It's time to open it up and see what's inside. Good old squeaky sound of a door. It's actually a nice clean facility. Um, okay, the reason that I bid on this unit, I don't know if you guys can kind of see from where I am, what would you think stood out? We have a box of records. We've got an Elvis Presley lamp. We have a uh, Alberta Pottery and Medelta Crock in number five, Tonka trucks. And so uh, to me, this had the hallmarks and I could kind of see back there, right there, there's one of those sort of Seagram's big bottles that this might've been the unit of a collector. And I'm hoping I'm really hoping that uh, that ends up being true. There's going to be some stuff like this gaming chair that I'll have to find a new home for. Um, and there's always a sofa. And luckily, it's just a, it's a small one. I was worried it was going to be big. So um, today, I've just come to kind of scrounge in the first little area here and kind of get a sense of what I've got. I've got some pictures, some bins. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to actually pop back um, and actually go through this thoroughly, but uh, I'm going to see if I can stand on this couch maybe, get my foot on there. And what is this thing? Maybe a picture or a mirror? I'm trying to find another space to step where it's sturdy, I don't know, since you don't really know what you're standing on, but this is full, full, full. There is a lot of stuff in here, guys. Uh, total paid for this um, in US dollars, $700 US for this entire unit. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic because there's some pretty interesting things in here already that we should get our investment back on this unit. Hopefully no problem. Uh, I see a box back there, maybe marked cards, maybe sports cards. Um, it's a full unit, so tomorrow ought to be fun. I'm gonna come on back here. We're gonna start loading up the truck. Uh, of course, as usual, first things first, out goes the garbage and the Goodwill. And then the rest, I guess, I'll, I'll, I'll sift through and see what I gotta do. But uh, should be a fun sift and a fun sort as this unit is stacked, packed, and all that. Little Coca-Cola glasses right there. I am going to take a couple things back with me today. And the reason I'm not doing the clear out today is that I just won the unit late in the evening and um, these guys close pretty soon, but I can see we've got some records. First one up, Twisted Sister. So there's some rock. Uh, <laughs> Scottish guard music. There's always some random stuff in here that's hard to sell. But, you know, if there's a few in there that are good, that'll be great. I see some 45s down at the bottom and with 45s, you're looking for picture sleeves which is like this, you got Elvis Presley right there. And I'm guessing this person was definitely an Elvis fan because we've got the Elvis touch lamp or the Elvis lamp over there. We've got an Elvis CD rack that looks like a guitar or DVD rack. And um, just general signs that this person liked to collect things. Um, so I'm gonna grab these records. I'm gonna put them in the to go today pile and uh, just load up this card a little bit before we go. 
kind of changing up my plan a little bit. I'm actually going to try and get some stuff that's going to go to charity out first. So I have a little bit of room to work, but um, already look, there's like a wheelchair, um, a nice old desk. We've got experiences with foods and the mom having a nice moment with her daughter. They bake something and the boy lingering around waiting to eat it or he's uh, taking a pee on the stove. <laughs> he's got that leaning against the wall sort of look. Anyway, I think he's just waiting for food to come around. Um, kind of a neat old book. And there's a whole box of cookbooks right there too. Some slightly newer. Um, so I'm going to try and sift out some things as best I can and uh, get them ready to head off to auction. Like I said, not taking a whole pile out of here today. But I am a little snoopy. Ooh, geez, I almost dropped my Elvis lamp. The, th the thing that caught my attention when I bit on this unit, I don't want to break that right off the bat. Got an old Pepsi Cola crate, which is pretty cool. Probably from the 1960s. Oh, no, yeah, 1965. Just kind of going by the logo. We've got some VHS tapes. The Jungle Book. Back when people, you could record movies. <laughs> I remember us like getting the getting the uh, VHS player set up so we could record whatever movies were going to be on TV. You'd have all the commercials and everything in there too. You'd have to fast forward when you rewatched it. Dirty clothes, and what's inside looks to be what it is. But if they're dirty vintage clothes, maybe they're worth something. But dirty clothes, not a great sign right off the hop. And it kind of looks like little kid clothes. That can go. Look at all the bins in there. Holy cow. Well, I got my first load of stuff for charity, ready to go. I'm gonna go and take this out and um, looks like based on the amount of stuff that's in there, it's gonna be a long day tomorrow. That's more than one trip. <laughs> so we'll come back again tomorrow. We'll start really digging through stuff. It is morning. I dropped my boys off at school. I've got my old truck with me. I've got uh, some ambition this morning. And I think I've got a plan. Step one, I'm gonna get to the storage unit and uh, basically just start taking everything that's trash to the dump. I'll do some charity runs and then everything else, which I think is gonna be a lot of stuff, is gonna come home. I've already given my wife sort of the warning that uh, the garage might get a little bit full while I'm sorting the next couple of days, but uh, luckily she's a trooper and uh, I'm gonna get the garage back <laughs> as soon as possible. Another reason why I kind of need a little sorting space out of my property, that'll come soon enough. But for now, off to uh, finish emptying out this unit. Brought garbage bags with me so I can do my dump run this morning. But one thing I noticed when you look at the area around most of these other doors it's nice clean plywood when you get to the unit that i bought look how filthy it is from possibly years of people going in and out of this specific unit um i have a feeling this one's been closed up for a while oh my gosh i forgot how full this thing was that's okay full is good full means that there's possibilities in every box but um, I do need to get some of this bigger stuff out of here ASAP, like this chair and couch and that uh, beat up old gaming chair and stuff. Um, but anybody who had a professional gaming chair might have had a higher end computer or uh, maybe a lot of video game systems. So maybe we'll get lucky and find a bunch of video games in here too. Uh, but certain things really just don't have any value at all and just need to go like this. Why? Things people keep... But uh, I'm going to start dragging stuff out and uh, start loading up the cart for a garbage run. Well, we got a metal Tonka truck. Not one of the oldest ones out there, but it is still a good toy. Probably only worth, you know, 15, 20 bucks in that kind of shape. But it's something. Little bits of a drying rack, I guess. Unfortunately. Hopefully nobody comes for one of these other units today because I've got all kinds of junk. What is that? Something Richards. Looks like, a, you know, the Michael Jackson 1980s sort of gloves. There's two of them here. <laughs> all right. 
Oh, this is the one big thing I think I've got to get out of here. Micro suede, the worst material ever for any kind of furniture. No matter how clean you might be, it looks dirty, leaves butt marks in it. Um, that's no exception. It looks terrible. Off to the trash. Um, but I was right about the video game systems. Look, there's an Atari 2600. There's an uh, Ultra Pong by Atari. And there's all sorts of other games in here too. What's this? Another Atari? I don't see the games themselves. I'm just going to try and open up the uh, zipper on this and see what's in this bag. Oh, some little systems and controllers. Oh, look, Super Nintendo Zelda. I wonder if there's a Super Nintendo in here. And I saw, and I set them aside, there were some early Game Boy games. And what's that one? Sega Game Gear. Uh, so yeah, if I have uh, somebody who is a collector from the looks of things and maybe was into video games, it might do okay. These old systems uh, can be worth hundreds of dollars and some of the games can be worth quite a bit. So good find already. There's a computer down there. Not that that'll be any good for anything likely, but signs telling me kind of what to expect in this unit. Found this right near the door. December 26, 2002. Dance till you drop. So, uh, I guess an advertisement for a party. But 2002. It's going back a couple decades. My hunch about how long this stuff has been in here might have been true. I guess we'll see. Well, I have a heaping truckload ready to go to the dump and I've barely made a dent out of this front little corner here. Um, once I get back, I'll be able to start actually really digging through some of these boxes and figuring out what then can go to charity or maybe there's some garbage I mix or hopefully there'll be some treasures. Um, oh, look, an easy stitch sewing machine. All right, well, I'm sure there's gonna be a few good things in here that will make it worthwhile. Um, but I better go for a run and come back because uh, daylight's not gonna last forever. So far, aside from a few little collectible pieces that were obvious to me, there hasn't been a whole lot of treasure. In fact, there's been a lot of trash. The paw. Well, there's an old cast. He needs a little repair, but a big cast lion. That's something. The world's biggest American chopper mug. Well, the lines probably were saving. This box was underneath the lion, and it looks a little bit more promising. I see a Barbie, a little sewing machine, and what looks to be a 1970s Barbie case. And are they in there? Well, there's some Barbie stuff in here. Doll. Dolls and dollhouse accessories are pretty collectible. So there's maybe some promise in this box. Let's set that aside. I'm trying to make a little pile of keep. That looks like a Barbie bed. The little sewing machine's kind of cool. It's like the uh, looking for the keep and the sell stuff. Oh, that's still in the package, albeit crushed. Flashlight fun, Stacy and Pooh. And there's, there's her poo. <laughs> All right, I'll just try and get, what year is this Cosmo from? 2002, again, 2002. It's like everything. Time stopped in 2002. A little Winnie the Pooh. Plush. I think I saw, oh, there's Scooby, Beanie Babies and stuff, okay. A few little odds and sods in here. I saw this case sitting there, it's a little worse for wear, but inside is a very cute little baby blue Remington Streamliner typewriter. And it actually seems to be in pretty good shape. I say that as something falls off. It's not broken, I just knocked it off. Anyway, kind of a cute little typewriter there. And there's so many more boxes to go. I might have to do a trip. That's all garbage stuff that I found again. I might have to go take that down and come back up. I'm trying to get as much garbage and debris out of here as possible so my trip home is lighter. You know, old VHS tapes, unfortunately, 
there's really very little demand for that stuff, but I am gonna make sure that's all that's in there because there might be other special things. Um, I did notice at the back though, you guys see that? It's one of those really great accordion um, uh, sewing boxes. And those always sell for a good dollar, never have a problem getting rid of those. Um, so I'm optimistic maybe that we'll still have a few little it's and bits and pieces and treasures around here, but uh, less talk and more digging. A lot of these boxes, I'm just gonna set that here. I need to know what's in it. An eagle. It looks like a wall hanging eagle. Yeah, it is. So some little statues and knickknacks wrapped away in here. Another day. What does this say? Another day shot to hell. <laughs> oh, it's quirky enough. Somebody would probably buy that. Put that over my keeper pile. Some of the boxes are labeled 2018, so not that long ago. I've made myself a bit of a path. I can get back here. Um, and I see, okay, I'm at the sewing cabinet, which is good. Music, computer discs, but there's a sewing machine right here in a cabinet. Um, I'm gonna try and work my way forward, so I'm gonna have to get some of this stuff hauled out of here and uh, put on the cart, because I am still trying to find stuff to take to the dump. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes people just pack up trash, and that's been the case with some of these boxes, and it hasn't been exciting enough for me to show you. But, you know, there's the occasional treasure too, so we're gonna uh, keep on poking around and see if maybe there's some hidden treasure in here yet to be found. Hang on, watch this. As long as it's not grandma's ashes, we're okay. All right. A box full of tools, which is good. And found a Leatherman. These are actually kind of expensive. Looks like it was given as a gift to somebody at some point. Um, but Leatherman's a very good tool. You can use that. Found a little pocket knife. It's not Swiss Army, but I needed a knife to open boxes. And <clears throat> I was going through this box and found this little Pokemon Golden Book from 1998. That could possibly be good because if I can find, if somebody in here was a Pokemon fan and there's Pokemon cards from that era, they can be worth a small fortune. So we're going to continue looking and hope, oh look, here's a little costume jewelry piece. Like really no rhyme or reason to how some of these boxes are sorted at all. Um, you know, it's like everything just got arm swept in here. Good, the bad, the ugly. So really I'm having to sift and sort today to go through all this stuff but finding a few little gems along the way. The storage unit has proved to be like a little mini hoarder house. Um, it is packed, it is full, there's trash, some good stuff, mostly trash. I am trying to get rid of all the old VHS tapes that are piled over there, and to do that, I've had to tunnel a little path over there to get to that stuff because it is so jam packed in here. Um, so far, no real big surprises or really great things. But I've been leaving the promising looking boxes for last because they're packed nicer or they're wrapped up. So those are things I'm gonna bring home to sort. What I wanna do is continue on with the trash, but I've been at it for hours now. Um, it's nicer when I have help with me, but I am getting pooped, <laughs> getting a little tired. But uh, I can't stop because I gotta be out, I think by the end of the day. So a little bit stressful, but we're gonna keep working at it. Well, this figures, I'm fighting the clock, trying to make my way back to the dump to drop off this other hefty load in the back there. And I've got this happening in front of me right now. A train has stopped on the tracks and somebody's driving the wrong way down the road, but there's a train just sitting there, not moving. Um, let's hope this doesn't take too long because this is my only way over to the dump right now. Made it back, train was still there. I actually went a different way. Look what we have here. Original Atari games, whole bag full of them. Gosh, this bag is like disintegrating. Put that in a keep pile. Uh, I did find an iPad earlier, like a relatively new one. Maybe about 10 years old or so. Okay, gotta see what's in here. I'm gonna open this up and see what's inside. Sort of a variety. Little screwdriver, compact. 
band-aids. Basically healthcare stuff mixed in. The little clock that looks like the playing card set. There's a lot of books in this unit too. A ton of books. Mostly horror. Stephen King and stuff. Shoulder pulley. Oh, there's something wrapped up in this. What's in here? They had a lot of statues of eagles. A lot of eagle statues. This feels like a statue might be in this Cosby sweater. Oh, yep. You guessed it. Another eagle statue. Put that in the bin. Books. Some chargers and stuff. Really just a good solid mix. That big bag of Atari games was pretty good. There's probably a couple hundred dollars worth of Atari games in there. I'm just making sure there's no other arcade or video game type stuff in there. It looks like a little portable radio They're from the 80s. A little Sony or something. Well, I found the last person who was looking in the storage unit. Dora. <laughs> but Dora, you are dirty and I cannot give you to a kid the way you are. Because I don't know if there's been mice on you. So off to the dump. Hopefully this will be my last dump run today. And then the rest can go to charity. Well, that's it. It's empty. This is the third day. I guess I'd say two full days to empty this thing out. And it's been, uh, it's been like milk in a dry cow. There's been not much coming out of this unit, except for a lot of dust and garbage. So uh, I'm gonna close this up. Get my deposit back, because you have to pay a cleaning deposit. Do one last run of the dump and um, sort through some of the things that I thought were a little bit better at home. So next time you see me, it'll be at my house seeing what loot came out of this unit. Well, here it is at my house, my mess of stuff. Um, and this is where the sorting kind of begins. And I start figuring out what can go to auction, like this Elvis Presley pocket watch, um, and what really just needs to find a home elsewhere, like a charity or in some cases the dump. Now, I've been loading some stuff up in the back of the truck already, like the five gallon crock. We've got boxes of books, Coca-Cola tumblers in the box, but anything that seemed like it was sellable, that's a box full of kitchenware, which would be perfect. Oh, and uh, my finger, I cut the, uh, kind of the side off my finger and I stuck it back on, um, hoping that it will attach itself again. Found out that Leatherman in the unit was sharp. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so I've got boxes of stuff all ready to go to auction. Um, some of the vintage Barbie, we'll put that out as a set. So I'm slowly loading things up. There's an old camcorder there. And I'm doing a little exploration. So we've got the uh, Metallic Flake Elvis Presley CD rack. That'll go. Um, video game systems, I'll sort through. And uh, it's really just a lot of exploration at this point and sorting and, and trying to make the best of, uh, of a situation. Now, it's going to be a, uh, a while before I get this all handled. And as I go through, I'll try and bag things up. So a little pair of um, you know, decorative oil lamps, functioning little oil lamps. Those can go as a unit. We've got, this was one thing that was a bit of a surprise actually, not to get myself off the topic, but I found a Rolex box. No Rolex, but that is a, a genuine Rolex box. It's not in very good shape, but that's probably 1960s era. So wouldn't that be great if I found a, uh, a Rolex in with all this? I mean, the box is here, but that's the sort of thing somebody probably would have kept on their wrist and not put in a storage unit. You never know. Um, as I go through and I find things like, you know, sewing supplies, I'm putting them right where they belong, back inside the sewing cabinet. So I'll fill that back up and get uh, this back to its proper use and function, which is a little bit of uh, veneer that's peeled off there, but somebody will still buy it because it's a really handy thing, you know, even just to use it um, for storing stuff, anything in would be super handy. So I'm going to get things uh, organized, loaded up in the truck, and um, with any luck, uh, I'll do a little bit more discovery, find a few more unique items in the mix here, you know, some random change and odds and ends, and um, we'll get the truck loaded up and get our first load out of here before too long. But 
keep my fingers away from this one. Antique cabbage cutter. Somebody will think that's cool as an antique or as something you could possibly still use. Um, there was this wild looking puppet and I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. He needs to be cleaned really badly, but this feels like it's out of the 70s or 80s. I can't remember what it's from. It looks like a, almost like a Chewbacca or something. I'm sure there's a proper name for that guy that I'll figure out later. Um, I brought this back to kind of look through. It was all pictures, but as I was going through, I noticed that they're all original paintings. These aren't, uh, these aren't prints. These are original oil paintings that are signed by the artist. And so I've got probably about 15 of those that are all inside this, uh, this container. Can you imagine if these were like Bob Ross originals? That'd be cool. I don't think they actually sold a lot of Bob Ross original paintings, but anyway, there's a whole bunch of original oil paintings in there. That's a good bonus. Um, and, oh yeah, hardcover books. I found a whole bunch of uh, first edition Stephen King books. Um, we've got Lord of the Rings hardcover. So lots of great hardcover books that I was able to separate out that uh, those are easily sellable. And just random odd things like an old school pencil sharpener and uh, <laughs> like literally not old school, but an old school, old school pencil sharpener. <laughs> um, so... I'm going to try and separate like all these little statues and stuff out and we'll just basically put things in assortments of what they are. But that's, uh, that's the next step for me is trying to figure this out, um, and do a little sorting along the way. Some alabaster bookends. Those are probably from the 1950s. Um, we've got some, you know, a dream book, more hardcovers, uh, some old toy cars, including some micro machines from the eighties, which, if you're my age, those were pretty popular back then. Um, and we've also been finding a few little assorted bins like this of jewelry, which that'll take some time to go through. And a lot of it looks like it's costume, but you never know when there's a gold or a silver ring in the mix there too. Um, so there definitely is quantity, but really when you think about how much stuff came out of that unit, really, this is all the stuff that I thought had potential. Maybe 10% of what was in that unit um, I thought had potential for resale. So they were storing all that stuff for for all those years, many years, and um, really a lot of it just didn't have much resale value um, at all. And if you're wondering, anything that was a family photo or a personal item like that did go back uh, to the uh, um, auction house, the storage unit place, so uh, we could return those back to the people. But to all this other stuff, we have to recoup the money we've spent. Um, so I have a lot of work cut out for me to make this happen, but uh, the sorting begins. Some things I brought back to resell were these, like these rapid uh, hammer staplers. These are um, like a good construction tool. It's got the packages of staples in there too. These list, um, and the, the rapid version like this, they sell in my area anyway for around $70 each new. So for somebody who needs these uh, for the work site, Instead of paying 140 bucks for a couple of them, they'll get them at auction for a much better deal than that. And for me, at least it's something that's sellable for the sale. As expected, there was some Elvis collectibles in there, like this uh, collectible Pez set in the tin, including the CD, all the different stages of Elvis. Um, mug sets, pretty much if, if it's Elvis, it's probably in that bin over there because there was a ton of Elvis stuff, um, which is good. It's sellable. It always sells. Somebody want that on their shelf. You collect Elvis things, you know, it's a little addition to put in there. Um, I'm going to keep the hunt going here. I still have a lot of bins and boxes I haven't gone through yet. So making little discoveries all along the way. Well, I'm down to my last little bit of sorting here. I think I will get my money back out of this unit. And it is going to be difficult. But um, there's good value in things like this Atari 2600. And there's not just one. There's two consoles. There's an Atari Ultra Pong. Uh, there's a bunch of early Nintendo games, Nintendo systems. So the video games alone should help get my money back. And then of course we got some collectibles like the Red Rose T figures, uh, loads and loads of jewelry, which frankly I don't have the time to sort through. So hopefully somebody will find some treasures there. And uh, I keep finding buckets of pennies and I have a whole giant bag of pennies. Just, it keeps on going and going. I will be very glad when this is all cleaned up and put away. Uh, we got pocket knives, and there's the darn 
Leatherman that uh, took a piece of my finger with it. So if you get this, be careful, because it is sharp. And we've got some Harley Davidson collectibles. I mean, it took a lot of digging to find a bunch of things that could be sold, but there was a few surprises, like the stack of oil paintings that was in there. And kind of neat, actually. Um, so I guess we'll try our luck at the auction and see how things go. I don't know that I would want another unit just like this again. It's so much more fun when I can go in somebody's house and just buy the few things that I want rather than have to take all this. But that's the way it goes. It was a lot of work. And um, at the end of the day, it might just be a wash. But we'll see. Well, that's it. Everything is loaded over at the auction house now. It's a waiting game. I am confident that I'll get my money back on the unit, but I don't think I'm gonna make anything on it. So it's, like I said many times, probably in the filming of this, that one was sort of a waste of time. Um, and you know, you have a few units like that and you might second guess ever buying a storage unit again, but you know, a few unique things. And I was able to get, albeit not in great shape, uh, an original vintage uh, Rolex box, which that does have some value and it has some value to me being a watch collector. Uh, so that is something that will stay in my collection, but really um, not too much else stayed at the house. The boots did go to uh, Hannah, Steven's girlfriend, and uh, they fit her perfect. She said they're very comfy. <laughs> so uh, a few little surprises came out of that unit for us, but really um, I was hoping for a couple big wins. I tried my psychology thinking that oh you know it was packed and maybe they were collectors and wasn't really the case anyhow guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode today's adventure i'll be glad that uh, when all that stuff is out of my life <laughs> and then we'll look forward to new adventures coming soon thanks again for watching we'll see you all soon and as always bye for now